Greetings, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris and today I want to show you a really inexpensive multimeter that I just bought recently. And it's a Unity UT33 series. Uh, UT33 to be exact, so it's the one with a square wave digital output. And yeah, let's have a look. And here is the meter itself. And in the box uh, comes the meter, a pair of test leads and a little flimsy instruction manual. Now, I've paid for this under £13 through eBay and it came from PASS, uh, PASS.co.uk, which is a reputable source of all sorts of various test equipment in UK. I like this meter because it's really small and handy. It's a palm-sized multimeter, so if you are able to operate any sort of modern smartphone, you'll be able to switch it on and off and operate it quite comfortably uh, just within the palm of your hand, which is really nice. Build quality wise, it's it feels okay. It's quite robust. It's got a little rubber over mold over the uh, over the plastic. It's just like a skirt going around, and the meter itself. One of the reasons why I chose this multimeter to expand my selection is the tilting bell on the back, because it's very short and stubby. So that means if I set it on the bench like this, uh, I'm avoiding reflections from the overhead light but also it's still visible to the camera and it's visible to me quite comfortably so that's a really nice size of a tilting bell for a little multimeter for the setup I've got. The rotary knob has got very positive detent so that's one of the better ones I've seen. There is a little bit of wobble in the in the turning knob as far as being decisive in terms of which sort of range you select it works really well and the multimeter has also got a pretty useless hold function and the backlight uh, which does work stays on for us until you switch it off I guess and yeah it it does work so let's take it apart and see what's inside the multimeter has been intertech tested listed not uh, not UL intertech is slightly less stringent in terms of testing nonetheless it's got some sort of testing certificate and there are two screws holding it right, I'm not even sure what kind of battery is in there and okay this is nice as you can see there is a huge lip going across uh, into the inside of the multimeter so it's not just a gap but there is there is a very large lip going across and this prevents in terms of a catastrophic disaster inside if something was to explode this would prevent the plasma at least it they've made an attempt to prevent the plasma from you know coming out of the meter and causing some more damage if you were holding it it's a palm sized device after all I'm not sure why it seems like at the front of it there is some sort of clip holding everything in place okay it did let go there is a small latch over here holding onto the lot and here we've got a multimeter and super heavy duty not for retail sales GP cell uh, yeah horrible things I'm gonna keep it in there for a short while but I need to remember not to leave it in there for any prolonged period of time because those things do leak here we have the insides of the multimeter and we've got a 10 amp fuse for the 10 amp range it's a ceramic fuse, so I guess you can call that HRC, but from my experiments, the glass fuses do not withstand very well any sort of discharge, whereas the ceramic ones tend to hold up the, char uh, hold up the explosion quite well. So this is really good. And we've got a smaller, what is it, 200 milliamps, and yeah, 200 milliamps fused. So again, it's a ceramic fuse, so reasonable quality for the price of just uh, under 13 pounds here are the two little springs that are made with the piezo buzzer in the other side which has been heat staked into place there is i think a thermistor here for some sort of protection let's try to take the board out so there is there are those little lips on the side so if i just squeeze it apart yeah, that's coming out. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to remove this screw to proceed any further.
And yes, that's what was holding it. The banana jacks are nothing spe special at all. It's just a piece of metal held in place by um, by the case itself. So yeah, the very cheap construction as you would expect for that price. Not many components at all. There is the main chip. Let's have a look under the screen. I suspect this is going to be a chip on board type of thing. Yep, it's a uh, yeah, chip on board. So we can't go any further because there's the backlight LED on the side. So I'm going to clip that back in before I have to pull out my soldering iron to put it together. And underneath you can see two bow bearings on a spring and that's what gives the detents. So it's got two ball bearings uh, causing the detent and that works really really well actually. And the detent is really positive on this. Really simple multimeter, reasonable protection, some okay looking fuses I guess. Yeah, for everyday use this should do quite well. Unity after all is, um, you know, half decent manufacturer of good test equipment. It's not just a random Chinese no-name brand, they do actually care for their brand, so they wouldn't release complete junk. Yeah, for a everyday use little cheap multimeter, I quite like this a lot. You know what, with this battery, I'm gonna put a alkaline battery in here. So I've got those uh, Kodak alkalines from Poundland, so that will fit, fit just fine. And it, the battery sits in here like so, and then we should be able to just squeeze the whole thing together. But this uh, this lip is, yeah, really nice and wide lip, f preventing any explosion coming out, trying to contain if anything go does go wrong. Uh, that's not a bad attempt. The screws are self-tapping screws, so yeah, be gentle with the with those. If you don't want to ruin something, always when you put the screw in, screw in backwards until until you feel the screw grabbing the old thread and then start screwing it forward basically screwing it into the same old thread as it was before if you just jump force it in it will thread itself again over existing thread and that uh, considerably shortens the lifespan of the of the hole for the screw the banana jacks are fully shrouded fully enclosed in in plastic so no problem there um, the cable on the um, on the test leads is very soft feels silicone -y. yeah there is no markings on the cable itself and the test leads are marked cut to 600 cut one 1000 volts so okay I guess adequate uh, yeah cut one cut two so cut one it's worth noting is uh, signal level stuff so no high energy uh, basically signal level only so that will do signal level up to a thousand volts without causing any problems. CAT2 is very very low energy um, circuits but slightly greater than the signal level so this is not a device to be poking into mains powered uh, equipment and so on even though it does have maybe 250 volts AC on there but yeah it's not the safest thing to do that it just has not been designed for this um, at all and in terms of measurements I'm sure it will measure out okay all the ranges there we go so that should be fine one thing that I find very useful I'm sure everyone does is the buzzer and whether it's got a good buzzer or not that uh, makes a lot of difference and this one the buzzer does sound nice uh, seems like it's latched so it's not causing that screeching noise when it's like halfway there but it's not very quick it's actually horribly slow uh, there is about half a second delay so not very good buzzer unfortunately I mean how hard is it to get the buzzer right I'm gonna have to make my own one one day it will do it doesn't sound horrible I quite like the fact that I can operate it with just my thumb and selecting all kinds of ranges on there and switching it on and off. That's quite nice. And I like this meter. And for the price that you have to pay for this, this is a really good choice. I mean, this is miles better even looking at the fuses and the construction of the case than the, you know, the yellow cheapy type of thing that you buy from eBay, the most common multimeter. 
that's it for this. I just thought I'll show you my new multimeter that I just got recently. And this will be handy, because as I said, for measuring stuff while recording, this will have really nice viewing angle. Because of the size, it doesn't take much space on the bench as well. So that's another plus. The square wave output, if you were wondering, puts out roughly about 50 hertz uh, of square wave, a signal level. So plus uh, 5 volts and 0 volts, and that can be used to clock something uh, when you're prototyping. Not terribly useful thing. I guess that's it. Not much more talking about this. Uh, I just thought I'd show you this one, and in case you were wondering, it's not a bad buy. Feels okay. I'm sure it will do the job. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please do give me a like if you did. And remember to subscribe for more random electronics related stuff. Take care.